Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here, thank you so much for watching. In this video we are going to talk about Firewolves in Synology SRM 1.3. This video is long overdue on my part, so I do apologize for that. But there's just one thing I want to clear before starting all the technical stuff. My goal is to try to explain the mechanism and the design language Synology uses in their firewall section of SRM. But as for the actual firewall rules you're going to see me create in this demonstration, that's just the way I like to do stuff. You don't have to follow one for one. It all comes down to the goal you are looking to achieve, what you want to block or what you want to allow. So with that out of, out of the way, let's start configuring stuff. Alright guys, so we're inside Synology SRM 1.3 and I just want to point out that towards the end of the video I'm going to show you how to create firewall rules to establish GOIP filtering, meaning clients or devices from countries you will define will be completely blocked from entering your network. It's a bit off topic, there's a bit of a caveat, I'm going to circle back to that towards the end of the video. Alright. For now, let's look at our local network. I do have several VLANs and you can circle back to my VLANs in SRM 1.3 video if you want a refresher on how to create VLANs in SRM. As you can see, I have several of them and I already have several DHCP clients that are on separate VLANs, just for demonstration purposes. All right, so that's our network. If we want to start creating firewall walls, we are going to click on security and firewall. Right out, right out of the bat, this section will be empty. And if you take a note in this line in the bottom of the page, if any IPv4 when to SRM traffic matches no rule, the default action will be to deny. That's great. That's a great default to start with. I'm not going to put too much weight on this uh, default rule. I want to create a baseline where no traffic is allowed to go through the network. And this baseline is almost what I did in my Unify firewall rule video. I want to uh, create a baseline where nothing is allowed. And what I do want to allow will be allowed in separate firewall rules above it. So this baseline is created by creating, by clicking, sorry, on the create button right here. And let's name it block inter VLAN traffic. I want nothing to be able to go through in protocol. I'm going to select TCP UDP. In source, click on LAN and make sure all local networks is selected. Go to destination. Again, LAN. All local networks. That's great. And deny. That's the first rule. I do want to create almost a similar rule, but for ICMP, pinging. I don't want clients to be able to ping each other, again, unless I create a firewall rule to allow it. So let's click on create. Block inter VLAN ICMP. Make sure to select in the protocol ICMP. Again, source and destination will be the same, all local networks, and destination LAN, all local networks, and click on OK. And now we've created our baseline. In fact, at this point, I will click on Save, which is Synology's, I think, implementation of the commit in some firewall vendors. All right, now we're set. So again, let's take a look Again, on our networks, I have several VLANs, clients, storage, servers, and now it's the point where you need to ask yourself, what is the goal you are looking to achieve? What do you want to allow and what you want to block? In my uh, demonstration, I want to allow my computer I'm sitting in front of, which is on the client's network, to be able to reach my server's network and my storage network. My storage network is where my Synology NAS devices it will be connected to. So let's start creating firewall rules to allow the traffic 
we're interested in. So click on create and name it something that you will be able to understand easily. For example, allow clients to servers. So my protocol will be TCP UDP. My source will be LAN, but now I will select my client's network. And in the destination, I will select LAN, but here I will select servers. All right, at this point, I'm going to make sure it's on, it's set to allow. By the way, I see an error I did in my previous uh, rule. Here, I need to change the action to from allow to deny. My mistake here. So let's click on save again. But let's try to see if we'll go back to our local network and our DHCP client. I'm on the 30 network, I'm 30.100 and if I'll try to ping 10.162, let's try to do it, ping 182.168.10.162, I'm not getting any reply back, that's because I haven't created an, an allow rule for ICMP, let's go ahead and do that, back to security, back to firewall, and create, allow clients to servers ICMP, make sure to create, to select ICMP in the protocol, source LAN clients, destination LAN servers, and the action will need to be allow. Let's click on OK and save. Now I'm not I'm not expecting this ping to work right now. Let's try to do it. Again, it doesn't work. If we've created the correct firewall rules, why doesn't ICMP work now? The answer is that firewall rules order matter a lot because in almost every uh, uh, firewall vendor. Firewall rules gets processed from the top to the bottom. So you need to make sure that your blocking rules are at the bottom so that they will be processed last and that everything that you want to allow and the action is to allow will be above the deny rules. This way the allow rules will be processed and if nothing matches these firewall rules, then it will continue to process downwards and get to the block intervillain traffic where it will be blocked. So now that we have ordered, all you need to do is to drag, to drag the firewall rule in its right place, click on save, and now that the firewall rules are in order, and remember, order matters a lot. Now that the firewall rules are in the correct order, let's try to do the ping one more time. This time I expect the ping to go through and indeed it does. All right guys, so it's not just about creating the correct firewall rules and the parameters in the rule. You also need to make sure it's in the right place. All right, moving on. Just as a refresher, on my client's network, I do want to allow access to my storage network. So let's create a firewall rule for that. Allow clients to storage. Let's select TCP UDP. Source will be my client's network. Destination will be my storage network. Action is allow and click OK and again make sure to drag the firewall rule above the blocking rules and click on save. And actually this process needs to be repeated until you have covered all the access that you do want to allow on your network. One thing I have found missing in Synology's implementation of firewall rules, something that is 
on every other major firewall vendor out there is the ability to create groups. So if I need to allow access from my client's network to every other VLAN, I will need to create individual firewall rules, which is not a bad thing, it's very granular. But there isn't a way to group, for example, trusted VLANs together and create one firewall rule for them. So Synology, if you're watching this, please give us the option. All right, we have now discussed creating firewall rules that are very, let's say, broad or general from network to network. But you do have the option to go even more granular and to uh, only allow certain ports to go through a network. Let's, uh, uh, let's create an example for that. Click on create. And let's say we do want to allow clients to a specific server on a specific port. So I will give it a name I can remember, for example, to server one on port, for example, 443. That's just an example. So in this case, I will only select TCP. The source will be my LAN network, my client's VLAN. But for the destination, I will select my LAN server's specific IP address. And I will have the option to specify an address. This address is, of course, bogus just for the demonstration purposes. But this is where all I, will all I will also be able to select a port. Instead of all ports, I can select custom, click on select, and specify 443. Make sure it's allow in the action, click OK, drag it above the blocking rules, click on save, and just like that, you have created a more granular firewall rule down to the IP address and down to the port. So it's another two levels of granularity in creating firewall rules, which I'm sure will come in handy. The great thing about these firewall rules and Synology's implementation of them is in the hit column right here. If you have created a firewall rule, for example, allowing ICMP from clients to servers, once you've saved the, uh, the rule and you start, for example, testing you will be you will notice the hit count increment and then you will know that your firewall rule is indeed working it's blocking or allowing as you've expected it let's open up my powershell for example one more time and do another ping to the same host as you can see in the firewall rule that allows icmp my hit count is incremented all right let's move on as promised, I will now show you how to create GOIP based uh, filtering for your, uh, for your firewall. But before you do that, there's already a database, a GOIP database, and you need to make sure it's enabled on your Synology router and that it's updated. You do that by going into control panel, go to system, system database i recommend that you've enabled each and every one of these databases and make sure they're up to date goip location database that's the relevant for us for me it's up to date and enabled to automatically install updates but let's take this opportunity to check threat intelligence safe browsing and domain name database there's an update so we'll click update and click OK. So now we are made may sure that our GOIP IP addresses are aligned and updated. So let's start creating the firewall rules to make sure we have blocked right out of the gate certain countries that you, we don't want traffic from. Let's click on, sorry, let's click on create. Let's give it a name. GOIP filtering. All right, 
protocol will be TCP UDP. You can create another rule for ICMP to prevent, I don't know, network scans. Source will be internet. IP address, select region. And this is where you select countries that you do not want any traffic from. In my example, it will be North Korea, maybe Iran. Click on OK. Now, you only be able to select 15 countries per rule. So if that's not enough for you, you will need to create an additional rule with additional countries. All right, we've selected our countries. Destination will be internet. We do want to uh, block the traffic to our internet address, at, at least if we have an, a public IP address from our ISP. And we'll select SRM in the IP address, all ports, and the action will be to deny. Now, this deny rule in my uh, implementation or the way I like to do stuff, this will be at the very top of our firewall rules. And of course, click on save. And I will even create another one for ICMP. ICMP geoblock protocol will be ICMP and again source internet region North Korea Iran maybe even China that's just my example of course destination will be internet and SRM in the IP address deny in the action and of course move it all the way up click on save now the more rules and the more countries you'll select in your uh, GYP filtering rules the more likely you will start seeing hits in about two three maybe five minutes in fact I'm going to add more countries to my rules and I'm going to pause this video and I'm going to resume the video in about five minutes and you'll start seeing the hit count start to increment. All right, guys, so it's only been, I promise you, it's only been about three or four minutes and hits are starting to come from countries that I've blocked. Now, I have blocked completely random countries that I know a lot of inter internet traffic is expected on my part so it, just to show you that it doesn't take long once you start GOIP filtering uh, until you start seeing hits from these countries you've selected to block so guys this was my overview or the way I like to do stuff in Synology firewall in SRM 1.3 I again apologize for this video being so long overdue I hope you liked it if you did give us a like Follow us on social media and join our Synology Facebook group. And I hope to see you all on the next video. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.